Like the Freemasons, the Illuminati, their concepts, and esoteric knowledge, traces back thousands of years to the Egyptian mystery schools and religion. However, this order was first publicly identified in 1776, the same year America signed the Declaration of Independence. On May 1, 1776, May Day, Adam Weishaupt, professor of law at Ingolstadt University, officially formed the Bavarian Illuminati. Fritz Springmeier wrote, The Illuminati is the continuation of the mystery religions of Babylon and Egypt, and the bloodlines of the Illuminati go back to people who at one time lived in Babylon and Egypt. David Icke wrote, The bloodlines and the Illuminati secret society network through which they manipulate has been the force behind many of the major empires of history. In ancient times, Sumer and Babylon were both headquarters for the Illuminati in the land now called Iraq, and Egypt was also extremely important to them. It was the accounts, texts, and artifacts from Sumer and Babylon that were burned or looted from Iraqi museums in the wake of the American and British invasion. After Babylon, the Illuminati bloodline network moved its headquarters to Rome, and it was during this time that we had the Roman Empire and the creation of the Roman Church, or institutionalized Christianity. The Roman Catholic Church structure, controlled by the Jesuit secret society, remains at the heart of Illuminati operations. The operational headquarters moved into Northern Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire, and for a period, it was based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. This was when the Dutch began to build their empire through the Dutch East India Company, and they settled South Africa. In 1688, William of Orange, one of the bloodlines, invaded England from the Netherlands and took the throne as William III in 1689. William ruled jointly with Queen Mary and then by himself after her death in 1691. In that year, William signed the charter that created the Bank of England, and the global banking system began to emerge. Banking and manufactured debt has always been one of the main vehicles used by the bloodlines to control humanity. From this time, the bloodlines and their Illuminati secret society network moved their center of operation to London, and what followed, of course, was the great and enormous British Empire. This was not the empire of the British, in truth, but that of the Illuminati bloodlines based in Britain. This expansion of the British and other European empires to all parts of the world exported the bloodlines to every continent, including, most importantly today, North America. Adam Weishaupt's Illuminati was designed to be an organization so elusive, so secretive, as to hide its membership within other secret societies. Weishaupt wrote in his journal that Freemasonry was in fact the organization most fit for infiltration by the Illuminati. Adam Weishaupt wrote, The great strength of our order lies in its concealment. Let it never appear in any place in its own name, but always covered by another name and another occupation. None is fitter than the three lower degrees of Freemasonry. The public is accustomed to it, expects little from it, and therefore takes little notice of it. Next to this, the form of a learned or literary society is best suited to our purpose, and had Freemasonry not existed, this cover would have been employed, and it may be much more than a cover. It may be a powerful engine in our hands. By establishing reading societies and subscription libraries, and taking these under our direction, and supplying them through our labors, we may turn the public mind which way we will. In like manner, we must try to obtain an influence in the military academies. This may be of mighty consequence. The printing houses, booksellers' shops, chapters, and in short, all offices which have any effect, either in forming or in managing, or even in directing the mind of man. Painting and engraving are highly worthy of our care. Weishaupt himself showed little respect for the Brotherhood of Freemasonry and mocked its structure in his journals. He knew, just as the bloodlines atop the worldwide secret society pyramid know, that the whole hierarchical structure of passing formal degrees is an unnecessary process. If the point is to learn occult subjects and become illumined, then there is no need for degrees, no need to slowly reveal secrets, no need for the rituals, rewards, and regalia. 
Adam Weishaupt wrote, Of all the means I know to lead men, the most effectual is a concealed mystery. The hankering of the mind is irresistible, and if once a man has taken into his head that there is a mystery in a thing, it is impossible to get it out, either by argument or experience. And then, we can so change notions by merely changing a word. What more contemptible than fanaticism, but call it enthusiasm? Then add the little word noble, and you may lead him over the world. For their sakes, and to rivet still faster their own fetters, they engage in the most corrupting of all employments. And for what? To learn something more of an order, of which every degree explodes the doctrine of a former one? Would it have hurt the young Illuminatus to have it explained to him all at once? Would not this fire his mind, when he sees with the same glance the great object and the fitness of the means for attaining it? Would not the exalted characters of the superior, so much excelling himself in talents and virtue and happiness, otherwise the order is good for nothing, warm his heart and fill him with emulation, since he sees in them that what is so strongly preached to him is an attainable thing? No, no, it is all a trick. He must be kept like a child, amused with rattles and stars and ribbons, and all the satisfaction he obtains is, like the Masons, the fun of seeing others running the same gauntlet. John Robeson was a Mason invited to join the Illuminati in the late eighteenth century. After investigating the order, Robeson declined the invitation and published a book which offered his conclusions instead called Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All the Religions and Governments of Europe, carried on in the secret meetings of Freemasons, Illuminati, and Reading Societies. John Robeson wrote, In short, I have found that the covert of a Mason Lodge had been employed in every country for venting and propagating sentiments in religion and politics that could not have circulated in public without exposing the author to great danger. I found that this impunity had gradually encouraged men of licentious principles to become more bold and to teach doctrines subversive of all our notions of morality, of all our confidence in the moral government of the universe, of all our hopes of improvement in a future state of existence, and of all satisfaction and contentment with our present life, so long as we live in a state of civil subordination. I have been able to trace these attempts made through a course of fifty years, I have observed these doctrines gradually diffusing and mixing with all the different systems of Freemasonry, till, at last, an association has been formed for the express purpose of rooting out all the religious establishments and overturning all the existing governments of Europe. I have seen this association exerting itself zealously and systematically, till it has become almost irresistible. And I have seen that the most active leaders in the French Revolution were members of this association, and conducted their first movements according to its principles, and by means of its instructions and assistance, formerly requested and obtained. And lastly, I have seen that this association still exists, still works in secret. The association of which I have been speaking is the Order of Illuminati, abolished in 1786 by the Elector of Bavaria, but revived immediately after under another name and in a different form, all over Germany. It was again detected and seemingly broken up, but it had by this time taken so deep root that it still subsists without being detected and has spread into all the countries of Europe. George Washington himself said, It was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati had not spread in the United States. On the contrary, no one is more fully satisfied of this fact than I am. As Robeson alluded, the Illuminati was abolished in 1786, but was then revived immediately after under different names. It became increasingly obvious to the good guys of European Freemasonry that even more drastic measures would have to be taken against the Illuminati. In 1794, the Duke of Brunswick, the Grand Master of German Freemasonry, wrote a letter to his brethren recommending the dissolution of the entire organization due to the fact that it had been infiltrated and was being manipulated by unseen hands. The Duke of Brunswick wrote, I have been convinced that we, as an order, have come under the power of some very evil occult order, 
profoundly versed in science, both occult and otherwise, though not infallible, their methods being black magic, that is to say, electromagnetic power, hypnotism, and powerful suggestion. We are convinced that the order is being controlled by some sun order, after the nature of the Illuminati, if not by that order itself. We see our edifice crumbling and covering the ground with ruins. We see the destruction that our hands no longer arrest. A great sect arose, which, taking for its motto, the good and the happiness of man, worked in the darkness of the conspiracy to make the happiness of humanity a prey for itself. This sect is known to everyone. Its brothers are known no less than its name. It is they who have undermined the foundations of the order to the point of complete overthrow. It is by them that all humanity has been poisoned and led astray for several generations. They began by casting odium on religion. Their masters had nothing less in view than the thrones of the earth, and the governments of the nations was to be directed by their nocturnal clubs. The misuse of our order has produced all the political and moral troubles with which the world is filled today. We must, from this moment, dissolve the whole order. The Illuminati, just eighteen years after its official formation, was so powerful and influential that its infiltration into masonry caused the Duke of Brunswick to try and, quote, dissolve the whole order. Neither Freemasonry nor the Illuminati were dissolved, however, and their power and influence has only increased in the centuries since. Ralph Epperson wrote, And in 1812, the president at Harvard University, Joseph Willard, retired to preach in Vermont. He took the occasion of his retirement on July 4, 1812, to express his concern over the consequences of the then looming war. He said, quote, There is sufficient evidence that a number of societies of the Illuminati have been established in this land. They are doubtless striving to secretly undermine all our ancient institutions, civil and sacred. These societies are clearly leagued with those of the same order in Europe. We live in an alarming period. The enemies of all order are seeking our ruin. Should infidelity generally prevail, our independence would fall, of course. Our republican government would be annihilated. Nessa Webster wrote, The art of Illuminism lay in enlisting dupes as well as adepts, and by encouraging dreams of honest visionaries or the schemes of fanatics. By flattering the vanity of ambitious egotists, by working on unbalanced brains, or by playing such passions as greed and power, to make men of totally divergent aims serve the secret purpose of the sect. People with money were welcomed, but kept oblivious of actual secrets. The purpose is to win power and riches, to undermine secular or religious government, and attain the masters of the world.